Hi YouTubers. Um, here today, um, just uh, wanted to, uh, I guess, uh, I got enlightened or not enlightened, but I just thought of some things to talk about. So I stopped my dinner, and that's why I have I'm I'm very popular right now because uh, everyone saw me eating, so they they're here. Uh, the other one, three, and then this one, you know, it is rarely going to see is my cat. Uh, uh, definitely, you don't think you'll hear the the purring, but my cat loves to purr. At least for me. So, um, hey meow. <laughs> hey hi meow. Come on meow. Uh oh, she's always jealous. Say meow. Say hi. Anyway, let's talk some doors. Let's talk on some doors. Let's talk about some of the uh, different levels of breeding that people have, or uh, different uh, reasons for breeding, um, and different levels of breeding. Okay, because obviously, as you and me. You watching me and me talking to you, we have different standards. You know, you don't know my standards, I don't know your standards. So I respect that level of that, that, that I don't know everything about you, you don't know anything, everything about me. But I try to gather as much information as I can, as you should do up to, uh, about anybody you deal with. So, um, you know, this thing about the dogs, these dogs, is a, a, it's a lot about standards and um, what you believe is your, what we believe is good. So, whatever good, whatever, <coughs> excuse me, whatever you think is good for you may be, may be shit or crap for other people. So, you have to really think about, you know, and, and, and prioritize. What traits are you looking for? What traits are you looking for? And it should not be just one, it should not be just two. You know, you should have priorities in, in, in the traits you're looking for, priorities in the things that you're looking at in each door, and, and engaging, you know, and, and grading everything, you know, about them. And if you look at looking at the dogs as, you know, Potential breeding studs and potentially breeding uh, uh, units. If you want to take it as away from feelings as possible, so you know because you have to remove the feelings from everything. Because if you have a lot of feelings for the individual dog and don't have uh, enough feelings for the breed, you know you see diamonds where other people see. You know, um, you know, rocks or crap. So, you know, you, 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 this dog may shine in your area, but really isn't anything, you know, up overall. Okay. So, you have to be honest with yourself, you have to be honest with the breed. You have to be honest with everything, okay? And I know some people that, ah, well, you have this. Uh... I'm coming for you guys. Hold on. All right? All right? I, everything I talk about, I believe. And even though you haters don't see the connections, and I, uh, I'm going to try to put the, you know, I'm going to put A, B, A, B, and C together so you could read it. But uh, hold on, because I believe in all of this. I believe that the, the dogs, you have to be a, have a standard, but I, at the same time, you have to understand that these dogs are not black on, or white. There's no A or B. There's no this or that. It, 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 it's kind of like a rainbow, but less than a rainbow. It's like a rainbow. Yeah, there, has, there is priorities. 
So, um, and there are things that you're looking for. So, a, a dog may not fill all the boxes, but if when you're breeding, you can fulfill the boxes that are, are missing or complement or in hope that one that is similar to this wakes this for that with this okay that is a possibility and that is that is not normal genetics but you have to be honest you have to uh, you know if you have deficiencies in one generation you have to make sure that those the same deficiencies are not carried over from the second generation to a third okay so if you're breeding a dog in the first generation that has uh, some flows that are in the top three or your priorities you have to make sure that in your second generation into your third generation you are not repeating those same flows be harsh you have to be harsh if you're using if, if, if units are from the first generation they have uh flows in your third priority one two three priorities in the first three you have to be very harsh on on the second and third generation okay you know and the best thing you could do is you know do be honest, honest with yourself, because in, 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 at the end of the day, good is in the eye of the beholder. So whatever is good for you might not be good for me, but again, um, you have to have a, like some sort of place that you can, uh, you know, gauge what you're doing. At least if you're honest. Because there's a lot of people that are not into the dog for the dog or for the breed. So they are cheating their way into the top. They're cheating into their way into winning uh, confirmation shows, weight pulling shows, uh, uh, running, you know, whatever. They're, they're pretty much doing this uh, because these individuals need that win rather than uh, um, you know using the activity to see where uh, your program is the, your breeding program is um, withstanding what, what, what it is against other breeding programs so uh, it is all about your uh, breeding purpose in the dogs because uh, you have to be you know you always have to be careful because there's going to be a lot of people that that, that want to put their hands in what you're doing. You know, I, I always say it's like everyone wants to be a, a, is trying to be a chef in your kitchen. So if you let them, you're always going to get gumbo. Okay, so you have to follow your path. You have to have a path. You have to always look forward you should always uh, uh, um, make sure that you're able to change evolve modify what you think with what you see which with what happens okay you we can't do this you know and say hey this is going I'm going through this this way and never change because that way, uh, if you do that, you're going to be a dinosaur. And you know what happened to the dinosaurs, okay? So uh, you, you know, you have to remember that uh, um, in this in these dogs, these dogs are living beings. They're not machines, so they're not going to come out the same. In one litter, like you could have ten dogs in one litter, and, and have an array of uh, different temperaments, from cold, uh, medium, and dog that is. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm speaking about 
uh, in terms of the American people terrier because that is my breed. So uh, excuse me if you're watching me and, and you're dealing with different breeds. Um, you can still watch me and understand it. Uh, if you're not, if it's not a uh, working breed, it's like an active breed, a, a physical an alpha breed, it's going to be less than what I'm telling you. This is a truly alpha breed if you have uh, good bred dogs. Um, so uh, you, you have to understand that, you know, these dogs are different levels, different levels of temperament. You, have, you really have to understand that not every dog is going to be an ace. You know, 99% of it, it are not going to be aces, not, are not going to be, you know, what you're looking for, 900%. And in fact, 99% of them are going to be exactly the opposite. Are not going to be 100% what you're looking for. So what are you going to do? You have 99% of the dogs are going to be 100% not what you're looking for. They might be have different attributes, different traits that you're looking for, but not 100%. So what are you going to do? You're going to just discard them and find all oh, those. Yeah, you're never going to. You're never going to go any. You're going. Oh, you're going to always be in you know, first and second step. You're never going to go above uh, above that third, fourth generation, fifth generation, and become a true breeder without. Uh, um, above that because looking for dogs that complement each other what what this dog doesn't have this dog may have or this dog may activate in this one and, and vice versa you could do that so you always have to be a uh, uh, real and how you're breeding, that includes identifying the traits in the individuals that you do not want to double up. Very important. Do not double up on the traits that you don't like. Do not put a dog that has a brag background with X dogs that act a certain way you don't like with X, with X dog that has X amount of dogs that you don't like how they act you have to be you know obviously it's more important that they're the same type of things that you don't like because you're doubling up the uh, genetically speaking so if you're doubling up genetically speaking they are more likely to come up i'm, I'm doing it like this so that each one is the uh, genetic uh, trait and, and these are the things that you're doubling up okay so you don't want that so move away from that Okay, so uh, yeah, so in, in that mentality, don't continue to breed a dog and dog that you didn't like what didn't like how he acted, but uh, has good genetic, good pedigree because pedigree is important. It's essential, you know. Pedigree is essential because you can't have a dog. Uh, Scatterbred dog because um, we can't have them, but a scatterbred dog that performs greatly still doesn't have a good potential to uh, continue that genetic uh, into the, his uh, family. Perhaps one generation, but two, three generations. If if a dog is uh, scatterbred, meaning no, no family connections between the uh, sire and dam, and uh, it doesn't work out that well. Okay, so um, let me show you. Uh, my cat is right here chilling. He's waiting. To, uh, uh, I give him some food. Yeah, right here. He's sleeping because you know, hopefully you guys are not sleeping. But I love I love talking about dogs. I love talking about genetics. Again, the breed is my life, so I think about it all the time. So uh, anyway, like I said, I, I always tell you guys that you have to learn from the dogs. And in my den, I see them talk to each other. 
okay? You know, they, I see them talk in, in terms of physical, uh, you know, physically and, and uh, sound. You know, so I, 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 I deal with these dogs all the time. So, you know, you see what I let you see in terms of video. There's a lot more that happens. You know, they're not clean like this because just nah, I work them out. I get them tired because that's very important in, in, in the dogs. You have to get them tired. You have to keep them tired. You have to keep them at energy at a normal level, human level, because they are their levels are a lot higher. But human levels meaning that they'll be a little bit more tired than normal. Uh, that way uh, I can control their uh, temperament as well. Because if, if you have one of these dogs and you just don't do anything with them, you kept them in the house or you kept them on a chain and you, do any, you don't do anything else, they are just going to be more uh, active. Some people will consider that more aggressive, more, uh, more on fire, whatever. But, you know, 99, no, no, 75% of the people that see the dogs don't, do not understand the dogs. They see some different type of movement. Oh, wow, what is this guy? It's very dog aggressive or animal written. No. But, you know, um, a lot of people want to see me or see people in, in, on the, in the woods or show me uh, a person showing them in uh, a big yard of dogs. But no, it doesn't have to be that way. You know, I, I, if you deal with the dogs, multiple dogs every day, you know, a lot more hands on, you know, than people that, that have big yards. It doesn't matter. See, um, so because you don't see me with boots on, you know, doesn't mean that I'm not about that life. You know, I, I wear boots. <laughs> I wear the boots, yeah, and they get dirty. So, I appreciate your time if you got to this point. You know, I tried to do some videos about my dogs or dogs in general. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this helps you. Hopefully, this you enjoy it. I'm going to finish my dinner, I guess. Here you go. And um, have a good night for everyone else.